I extracted all the files from each type of NVIDIA driver installer, the Game Ready drivers, Studio, and even the Quadro installer, so that I could compare them at a technical level to know whether or not it even makes a difference which one you download, assuming they do have the same release version number. I'm Theo Joe, I make all sorts of computer tech tip videos, and let's get into it. As a quick primer, for any given release version number, NVIDIA might have different branches of the installer that they release. The two most common ones are gonna be the Game Ready driver. These are the most common. All driver releases are gonna have a Game Ready version of it. And the other common one is the Studio drivers, which NVIDIA says gets additional testing and validation for creative apps like Photoshop, Premiere Pro, that sort of thing. There's also the Quadro drivers, but those are only for certain high-end workstation and maybe data center cards. You can't actually install those with normal gaming cards. However, they may still share the version number with the other branches so we can compare those two. So basically, in any case, anytime NVIDIA releases a driver new version number, there's always gonna be the game ready driver and then sometimes the studio driver or quadro driver along with it and still with the same version number as the game ready driver. I actually fetched a list of all the driver releases going back a while and it turns out that 54 of the last 101 release versions had studio drivers and the rest only had game ready drivers. So around half of driver releases came with a studio version or around every other driver release. So obviously, if you only want to ever use the theoretically more stable versions of drivers, then you would wait each time and only install the ones that have a studio version. But given the same version number, like you wait and there is a new driver version and there's a studio version for it, does it actually matter whether or not you install the downloaded thing that specifically is labeled studio driver or the game ready driver? Well, that's what I wanted to know. Now, if you download each one, you will see that they are indeed different files. They are slightly different size between the game ready and studio version. The Quadro is quite a bit smaller, but I'll get to that later. So I extracted each of them with 7-zip, which yes, is a thing you can do for certain EXEs. And then I compared the extracted folders with a tool called Beyond Compare. And comparing the game ready version to the studio version, you can see that they are mostly the same. The differences are in the list devices.txt file and some different files in the display.driver folder. The list devices file is pretty much what it sounds like. It basically just lists all the supported GPUs for a given driver release and which INF file contains info about which devices. And then in that display.driver folder, the only changed files are several of the INF files, which basically tell Windows how to install and set up the driver, as well as the displaydriver.nvi file, which is effectively just a text file and it lists the current files in this directory and their sizes. But you'll notice that the actual actual binary driver files in both installers are exactly identical. So it's pretty much just any metadata and slight configuration files that are different. But even for the different INF files, which even though they're like configuration files, they don't actually have any different configuration. It's just kind of which devices are listed in there. What I noticed is in the game ready driver installers, all the INF files, the names end with i.inf, while for the studio drivers, they all end with si.inf. There are three INF files that are entirely only in the studio driver version, and those describe different quadro and workstation level cards. And then there's one INF file that is only in the game ready drivers folder, and that one describes a few really basic entry or mining cards. For most of the rest of the INF files, literally the only difference in their contents is whether a specific line says GRD equals one or CRD equals one for game ready driver and creator ready driver, which is the old name for studio drivers. And then for the other INF files, which have changes beyond that single line, even for those, they just have different lines listing fewer supported cards, but the rest of the file is the same. So basically the only difference between all the files is which GPUs they say that they support or not, but in reality, the actual driver files are exactly the same. Put simply, if a driver release version has both game ready drivers and studio drivers available, practically speaking, it makes absolutely zero difference which one you download and install, assuming that you don't have one of the cards that requires one or the other, which is very limited. Now, to be clear, that only applies given the same version number. I'm not saying that studio drivers and game ready drivers in general are not different. The difference is in the level of preparation that is done on a driver release version that will have a studio version with it. In other words, 
NVIDIA only ever makes one set of driver files for each individual release version number. The driver files themselves are universal. However, every other release or so, they may decide to do extra testing on that driver. And if it passes all those extra tests, they'll say, okay, this one qualifies to also be released as a studio driver. So then those exact same driver files are put into the package of the installer called the studio driver, but really it's the same. It's basically just an easy way to be sure that a particular driver version went through extra testing for creative apps. Now, what about the Quadro drivers though? Comparing that to the studio drivers, it's actually a bit interesting. Like we saw before, there are differences in the supported list of devices and their INF files. And this time the file names of those, instead of ending with si.inf for studio, they end in wi.inf where I guess W is for workstation. And beyond that, again, the actual driver files and binaries are exactly the same. However, this time there is a big difference in the installer itself and what it installs. Basically, the Quadro driver is way more bare bones and it doesn't install nearly as much supporting software, I guess you could call it, in addition to the driver itself. So it doesn't install physics, no NVIDIA app, no shadow play, gaming, streaming, stuff like that. Presumably because the Quadro cards are intended for workstation, maybe even data center stuff, it's not gonna have any of the consumer level gaming stuff. And you can see that in the difference with the setup.cfg file. The setup.cfg is the configuration of that installer itself, and it removes references and parts that would install the folders that are not there anymore, obviously. So it removes a lot, but that's the difference. And importantly though, it seems that for the Quadro installer, there is nothing additional that gets added that isn't in the studio driver. So it only differs in what it doesn't install. And likewise, looking at the devices list for the Quadro installer, while the Quadro drivers support way fewer devices, there aren't any that exclusively require the Quadro drivers. In other words, if you have a Quadro card, you can still install the studio drivers and get the gaming features, but not the other way around. If you don't have a Quadro card, you can't install the Quadro drivers. But again, it's not like you're missing out on anything extra. That being said, remember that if you have a Quadro card, you actually can't install the game ready drivers. It won't let you despite the actual driver files being the same. But again, they're not even really different from the studio drivers anyway. You would just have to wait longer between them. And I think that's probably because they don't even bother testing the Quadro cards with the gaming drivers at all. But still, in any case, hopefully now you have a better grasp on whether or not it makes a difference. Really, if it's the same version, it doesn't. So I'd be curious what you guys think and if you did ever wonder this. We could talk about that all down in the comments. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Absolutely annihilate the like button, it helps out. Don't let any bit remain. If you want to keep watching, next up, here's a video where I talked about the most useful Windows app of all time. I think you'll want to hear about this one. I'll put that link right there you can click on. And if you want to subscribe, I try to make videos about twice a week, so it should be worth it. So anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.